Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, my contributor, none other than attorney Adrian Lawrence, attorney at law, author, and TYT contributor. Top story of the day. The officer who killed Patrick Lyoya has been identified according to reports. Now remember the police chief said he's not going to identify the officer unless the officer received some type of charge. Well, people went on social media. Uh, let's go ahead and put up the picture. Let's let's do that now. All right. So according to many individuals on social media, that's the guy. His name is Chris Paul Shore of Grand Rapids. According to many outlets and social media posts, that is the person who killed Patrick Lyoya, unarmed black male who should be alive. Let me take you to that video. Let go, Taser! How many cars you guys are on? Drop Taser! Everyone. Get back! The young black male who was killed was trying to avoid arrest, that is obvious. Just because you may deserve to see a judge does not mean you deserve to see your maker. This was avoidable, the cop did not have to kill the young man, shot him in the back of the head. Now, another nuance to this story is this, the actual body camera footage of the officer mysteriously turned off right before he killed Mr. La Oya. And then it turned back on when CPR was attempted by other emergency responders. Now, according to the narrative, they're going to say in the official report uh, that it turned off because of the struggle. Well, I did some research and I found that in order to turn it off, you can't just hit the button. As a matter of fact, the reason why the camera does not turn off from someone just hitting the button is because they want to make sure that a tussle, that physical combat does not or will not inadvertently turn off the camera. So in order to turn the camera off, you literally have to hold the button down for three seconds at a time to turn it off. There's more, obviously protests are happening now. Here's some of that protest. Do you not find it ironic that just a few days ago, right here on Indisputable, we reported on a story in Sandy Springs, Georgia, where a white male who was wanted for murder, burglarized another home, ran upstairs, cops flood the house, and they beg him to come downstairs, pleaded with him, said, we don't wanna hurt you. They did not send SWAT, they did not shoot him. He runs downstairs, grabs a cop, stabs the cop, damn near kills the cop, they tase him. They don't try to kill him, they engage in physical combat inside of the house. The fight goes outside of the house, they still don't try to kill him, they try to disarm him. And eventually they decide to shoot him to wound him because they were in proximity to do so. They could shoot to wound and that's what they did. They took him to the hospital. After he went to the hospital, his wound was treated. He was then booked into jail. Due process will be applied to the young white male who attempted to kill a police officer. A growing number of reports across social media are claiming to have identified the Grand Rapids police officer who killed an unarmed black man following a traffic stop over an alleged misdemeanor moving violation last week in Western Michigan, remember this was all about a tag. You know, some jurisdictions are passing laws right now saying that police officers will no longer engage the community based on 
these small traffic violations. Not worth the interaction, there's more. The reported revelation came hours after law enforcement and city officials in Grand Rapids on Wednesday released video footage of the police encounter that left Mr. Patrick Lyoya dead from a single gunshot wound to the back of his head on April 4th. Multiple Twitter accounts posted tweets claiming that Grant that the Grand Rapids police officer who killed Mr. Lyoya is named Christopher Paul Shure. All right. Once again, let's put up his picture. According to this Twitter user, uh, this officer makes a salary of roughly $90,000 a year. There was no immediate verifiable proof presented with these tweets, but some of them were accompanied by purported photos of what appears to be a class of recruits with whom he graduated from the police academy. We are going to continue to highlight this story. Now I decided to go ahead and put this information out. The reason is because this hide the pickle routine with public servants is getting old, it's getting old. This is not a private company. Policing is not a private corporation, it's public. It is paid for by your tax dollars, which means the accountability should be to you. There should be a transparency applied, but routinely it is not. Attorney, what are your thoughts on this case? I think you're absolutely right in terms of every public servant should be willing to be held to public accountability by virtue of the fact that they take their paycheck from us. Yeah. And also too, you know, there should be no shame in admitting that these are the actions that you took if you claim that it is on behalf of we the people and it's for the betterment of our society. So putting your face out there should not be a problem. At the same time, we do have to bear in mind that this young man, 26 years old, losing his life in this situation. And so we see so many other situations involving white suspects. Um, as you mentioned, Dr. Ritchie, it just it really shows you that this is two different American justice systems. That you can't tell me that race, racial bias is not playing a role in how police police our societies. And it just it continues to remind me that black lives don't matter to our world. No. Yeah. And that's why we have to say it and proclaim it and march and do rallies and protest, advocacy, policy. And I want to remind everyone, defund the police comes in many forms. While there are people who are bent out of shape because defund the police is a dynamic inside of a campaign that says we must reform policing policies. Please understand that when a cop is corrupt and that cop violates a citizen and the city, has to pay out money because of that cop that's defunding the police. That's your monetary defunding. But when you have corrupt cops, period, you're defunding the trust from that community. You're defunding the opportunity to actually have a cop community relationship from that local area. So defunding comes in many forms, not just a movement that says policing needs reformation. A white female was pulled over for a traffic stop, was pulled over, had marijuana according to the report. And the deputy decided to physically assault her, forced her to be baptized. She then brings this to the light and she ends up dead. Let's put up a picture of the victim here, died. Last week. A civil rights lawsuit against a former Tennessee Sheriff's deputy was approved by a United States District Court judge. The lawsuit accused the deputy of baptizing a woman. That's right, you heard it correctly. Baptizing a woman against her will during a 2019 traffic stop. Now the woman who brought the lawsuit, the woman you're looking at has been found dead according to the local news. Her name is Shandell. Marie, Hamilton County deputies found the body of 42 year old Shandell Marie Riley at a home on Log Cabin Lane. The cause of death is still unknown and an autopsy is yet to be conducted. Who was at the center of the initial investigation? This guy, he's the deputy. 
His name is Deputy Daniel Wilkie. Now he's a piece of work. Former Deputy Daniel Wilkie was indicted in 2019 on 44 charges, including rape, assault, and official oppression after he pulled over Riley and during the course of the traffic stop, found her to be in possession of marijuana and placed her under arrest. After he placed her in handcuffs, Riley says the deputy inappropriately touched her on the crotch. Wilkie and Riley next discussed religion. It gets weirder. Three minutes, and then another deputy, Tyler McRae, left sometime during this conversation. So he has another deputy there. This deputy leaves. Riley testified that Deputy Wilkie asked whether she had been baptized. She responded with concern. That she may not be ready. But according to Riley's testimony, the deputy told her God was talking to him and assured her that if she got baptized, he would only write her a citation and she would be free to go about a business. The judge's ruling explains. According to Riley, the deputy also indicated that he would speak at court on her behalf if she agreed. Riley decided to go along with this plan because she did not want to go to jail. She also thought the deputy was a God fearing church like man who saw something in her that God talked to him and testified that it felt good to believe that for a minute. Let's put up his picture again, okay? That's called Jesus pimping, that's what that is. Exploiting faith in order to get what you want. A lot of preachers do it every day. He just happens to be a deputy, okay? Hamilton County DA Neil Pinkston has requested the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation investigate Riley's death. Remember, she gets the lawsuit approved. This guy obviously is problematic. He gets charged with multiple felonies. And then mysteriously, she ends up dead right after her lawsuit gets approved to move forward. Now, obviously, this cop has a history. Anytime we do these stories, even if we don't have the history documented, you can bet they got one. But we found one in a video. Let's put up this um, screenshot. That's a video. Hamilton County deputies, once again, Daniel Wilkie and another guy named Bobby Brewer can be seen hitting a man in handcuffs. They were then cited for use of excessive force. All right, this is why police reform is necessary, but also police replacement. We talk reform a lot, but some of these cats cannot be helped. These individuals are so corrupt to the core that in order for you to move on as a police agency, you gotta lock their ass up and hire somebody else. You have to send a clear message to the community around you that you give a damn enough about them to hire people that care, to hire people that will actually serve the community rather than terrorize the community. What that woman went through was terror, that's what happened. Now, we're going to follow this story. Obviously, it's extremely ironic. I mean, very coincidental, right? That while she's waiting, all of a sudden, she ends up dead. Now, Adrian, I know this is what we call circumstantial, right? But my goodness. Yeah, it definitely seems that this is one of those, um, the circumstances may align a little bit too well. Uh, and that's something that hopefully the Tennessee uh, Bureau of Investigation will actually honestly and sincerely and earnestly get to uh, the answers that we need. Uh, but one of the answers, as you mentioned, is reform. And some of these people cannot be reformed when it comes to law enforcement. And we see this with this individual, uh, I believe this Riley gentleman, he is facing uh, like two rape charges and like 44 other counts. This thing's, the thing is that his department knew who he was. 
without yeah. a doubt. And also too, the legacy and the reputation that a lot of these departments have built are why they are attracting these recruits. Because mm-hmm. that they know that they can abuse individual civil rights, that they can abuse their power and they can engage in all sorts of problematic and absolutely disgusting behavior like this gentleman did in this case with this woman forcing her to be baptized and sexually assaulting her in the process. And that's why they're joining the police force because they know they're gonna get a license to assault. That's right, and with some exception, typically an organization has a culture and that culture attracts what it is. Mm -hmm. That organization will attract what it actually is, the values they uphold, the culture they exhibit. You will attract individuals that identify with the culture of your organization. So you're absolutely right, Adrian, there's something about the attraction model here that continues to connect with people like this, who obviously are the worst amongst us and not the best. Arkansas Sheriff admits, yeah, he uses the N word. He said it. And he also said it is what it is. All right, let's put up his picture full throttle here, okay? Arkansas County Sheriff, he's in hot water over comments he made regarding black people in response to a shooting. And the local Democratic Party, they are calling for his resignation. This is Prairie County. The sheriff, you see, his name is Rick Hickman. I, I'm not kidding. His name is Hickman made the comments while speaking to a dispatcher who was relaying the details surrounding a triple shooting that left three people dead. The house next to the apartments, the dispatcher told Hickman, the sheriff replied, "Oh, really? Black people then. That's what this man said on open communication, black people then. Hickman, who's actually running for reelection, said the call is being used against them for political reasons. Yeah, that's what happens when you're on record for being racist. I said, where was it? The blacks in the apartments, cause those apartments are all blacks where it happened. Higman told KARK4 News, adding, nothing racial about it. Now, <laughs> I'm about to take you somewhere. Now, he just said, you know, yeah, I called them the blacks. Uh, it's nothing racial about what I said. There's a bunch of black folks over there, it's all black people. Well. Sheriff, if it's all black people, then you don't have to say it because everybody knows it's just all black people over here. You you don't actually have to mention it if that's so everybody, you have detectives that work for you. These are investigators, they already know that, right? You were making a racial point, Sheriff. That's why you said it the way you said it. The more proof, here it is. When asked if he's used racial slurs in the past, seems like an easy one for a guy who's willing to lie. Uh, Sheriff Hickman replied, "Ah, probably in the past, uh, but you know, it is what it is. Everybody does. I don't use the N word a lot, but occasionally I might have said it. Vote for me. Um, He also told the reporter that he is not racist and that he sticks by everything he said. You know, let's put his picture up again, okay? OG racist. Let this be the hill he dies on. I'm not talking about physically, but politically. But when you look at the demographics of the people that actually vote for him, Hell, he may actually get reelected because he said the N word. Sad state of political affairs. Um, I bet you about a hundred thousand dollars he voted for Trump. All right, Adrian, thoughts? You know, some of those that work forces are the same that burn crosses. Mm. I, it's just like we know who this individual is, and also his whole. I might have used it occasionally, once or twice. Yeah, right. That's the equivalent of saying, "Yeah, officer, I, was, I only had two beers." Like, right. get out of here. This is something that is part of your language, your diction on the regular. And the thing is, is his constituents know that they know who he is. It's a reason they put him in power. And like you said, I wouldn't be surprised if they elevate him again by virtue of the fact that he's going to maintain the systems of oppression, particularly racial racial oppression that have long built the South. So I am not surprised. Yeah, and this is why it becomes a problem for us all. This is why it's in our wheelhouse. When you have a prejudiced racist individual like this who's in charge of any executive governmental entity, 
that person is getting paid by everybody. That person is getting paid by white folk, black folk, brown folk, uh, everybody, right? Uh, he has to exercise his authority in a way that's non biased. If you walk around saying the N word and utilizing racial tropes on open communication sources, do you think that he puts prowess behind investigating the death of a black person the same way he puts prowess behind investigating the death of a white one? The answer is no, because his hyper aggressive bias plays into the way he deals with crime. And that's why this is problematic. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel right. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Movie. I'm fine. Guess what? I will park here. Hey, what's up? My name is Evan Berryhill, and I will park here. I pay the same amount as rent. I'm sorry that I don't. I prefer eating out. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that, yeah, I get more than you. That sucks. Yeah, that does suck. Oh my God, I don't get any. I'm not hot as all. I'm. Um, if you touch me one more time, I'm gonna have video evidence that I. Okay, can video make. this. You're. <laughs> need to learn that equality is what I got. How are you any better than me? What a disgrace that y'all next to me. Imagine that. And you're, and you're, god damn, what a disgrace to America. <laughs> Go Trump. Yep, Republican all the way, baby. I'm sorry, not sorry that I'm not a Joe Biden fan. Oh, we're not. How do y'all like Joe pain? Biden? No, we don't like oh, Joe Biden. Oh, yeah, I'm like Joe Biden. Yeah, there, there's actually more. Uh, this individual, according to the narrative, was uh, driving 60 miles per hour, almost hit the individual that you saw uh, talking to her. Here's more. Will we gross you out enough to move over space? No, I'm not gonna move over. How is that? Tell me how that, okay, look, record this. How is it fair that I'm paying the same amount of money? How's it fair? Fair, right? Fair. How's it fair? It, well, I'm pay, I don't, How's it fair? I don't live with anybody. How is it you fair? guys are together. Oh, it's I don't fair. live with anybody. Oh, and that's our problem, how? And the fact that we're <laughs> what does that have to do with Oh, it? I don't give a that y'all are videos of you. I've got no, recordings okay. of you saying okay. these well, who y'all live are, right now. Y'all are sorry, not sorry. Y'all are got you. I've got you on video. I know, your you're friends wearing, getting you're tired. Wearing of belly bun ring and booty shorts. Like, and you know what? I don't care. You know why I'm holding yeah. this double space? Because my neighbor actually has to work. I'm like, y'all, let me guess. Y'all are on on, on in the This Karen is homophobic. And hateful. Let's put up a picture. We found out exactly who she is. I got some more information too. She was going to accuse them of being unemployed there. And even if they were, why does that matter? Other than just her wanting another reason to look down upon people. She continued to spew homophobic slurs against those individuals that recorded. Evan. Barry Hill Jewel, AKA Drunk Homophobic Karen. There she is. The other photo you're seeing is from the now archived About Me page on her boutique's website. Oh, yeah, she's the owner of Texas Angels Boutique. Now, some commenters online mentioned that she uploaded an apology video. But it appears whatever social media she had has now been taken down. Either way, folks said it was a fake ass apology. And for the curious, here's the publicly available contact information for the boutique in case you would like to frequent there on your own time. Now the incident further explained by Taylor who took the video when the video was uploaded to Facebook. Taylor said and I quote, last night after a lovely birthday dinner with my family. We were almost struck by her vehicle 
as we were coming into our home. We calmly approached her about the situation to which she responded in a drunken rage and elevated to her calling me and my partner the F word and left the two lovely notes down below on our front door as well as a third note not pictured as it is now an evidence that was posted on my driver's side. All right, let's put up the note. Yeah. Taylor, Taylor concludes saying the police were called and handled the situation accordingly. Another note called Taylor and his partner uh, the F word slurs, okay? While receiving waves of support over the incident, the couple also experienced equally homophobic remarks and even death threats for putting this Karen on blast. Max even had been temporarily banned on Facebook for violating community guidelines regarding hate speech when he tried to upload the video, her video to provide context. So here's what we're going to do. We stand with our allies here at Indisputable. People are going to have to face themselves. We provide a mirror on Indisputable for reflection and also an opportunity at correction. You do not talk down to people. You do not call them names. You do not use derogatory language. And if you're in front of a camera doing getting somehow I get tagged, you will be on this show. That's how we're gonna do this. Now, once again, this is a societal marker. It is unfortunate, but a reality. The Karen that you just saw represents a macrocosm of this kind of behavior throughout our country. It permeates, it's there. It's beneath the surface for some, but others wear it on top of it, like she did. And some of you will say when we post this on Facebook Watch or YouTube, Well, doc, she was drunk, give her a pass. Drunk don't make you bigoted. Drunk does not make you homophobic. Drunk simply eliminates the barriers for you. That's what grandmama would say. Adrian, thoughts? Yeah, that little bit of liquid courage, all it did was amplify who she is. Yeah. And I'm sure the microaggressions and biases that she has let out throughout her life, now they just all came to a head. And this is exactly who this person is. So do not look away and don't give her any passes. And I'm completely okay with her being exposed for her behavior and whatever repercussions come from that. And I'm glad that it sounds like from the gentleman's post that there will be some repercussions and that there is someone in a law enforcement body even looking into this matter. Because the reality is that there will be no deterrent effect in any way unless there's actual accountability. And so it's like we all pay taxes, we all are investing in law enforcement to do its job. So okay, go ahead and hold this woman accountable here. There it is, real simple, not complex at all. Because it's Friday, I got something for everybody, double dose. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a in Sunday? You're my friend, back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Remember, we just paid a load of money for these empty bottles. You did not. Please give them back. Yeah, we did. How would I have them? That's crazy. Why are you doing this? How would I have them? Mim, nobody because sells those. Mim, please give me back our property. Oh my God. You guys charge $70 for these bottles. What are, are you talking Crazy? Mim, what are you talking about? We do not sell those. Those come with a water machine that we have. We only serve water out of them. And you're worried about something that I paid $70 for? Uh, you did not pay $70 for that. Yeah, we I don't did. even have, there's no possible way. It, it doesn't exist. You guys are ridiculous. We're ridiculous? Okay, okay give yeah. me the other bottle. Bye. Give me the Bye. other bottle. Hey, close the door. Give me the other close bottle. Close the door. I'm not letting you leave. Idiot. I'm him. You're acting crazy. Why are you? No, you're an idiot. Okay. She tried to steal both of them? Karen, your privilege is out of control, madam. The Karenicity in you runs deep. I thought it was quite interesting when she gave up one. So, all right, you got me. You got me. You got me. All right, here you go. All right, gotta go now. You got the other one, Karen. Karen, why are you stealing? Water bottles or whatever they are. Why are you taking them from the restaurant? And, and damn it, we know you didn't pay $70 for it. Okay, uh, Adrian, uh, this person obviously is a silly billy. Uh, but once again, this is a new one. 
I, I never even thought of this crime before. Uh, still, mm -hmm. the glassware from the restaurant you're eating in and claim, hey, I paid for it at dinner. That, that, that requires uh, a lot of audacity, that is for yeah. sure. And also, I wasn't sure if I could see it correctly, but the emblem in the middle of uh, her car steering wheel looked like it was a Porsche emblem. Uh -oh. And I thought that was yeah, a little interesting. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm just like, why is it always these rich people who they ain't paying <laughs> taxes and it's like they won't pay for anything. And yet they still feel so incredibly entitled. And it's interesting because the first Karen, I believe, was also driving a Porsche. And it just, I don't know, but I just see a lot of behavior coming from these folks. And it definitely seems to be very much tied to audacity. You know, I think we have discovered another new dynamic that we must notate in the Karenicity handbook here. <laughs> that Karens and Karens and their vehicles, if it's a Porsche, there's a connection, obviously. Uh, we're going to explore this more with further research. We appreciate you bringing that to the attention of the Institute. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. We have more information about the accused Brooklyn mass shooter. He is a far right extremist. Let's put up his picture. Okay, I'm gonna give you some background to Frank James, the person who has been arrested for the mass shooting that we talked about earlier in the week. 62 years of age, he's now under arrest for that mass shooting that took place on a Brooklyn subway train. His social media feed is filled with disturbing theories. We're gonna keep his picture up. So Mr. Frank James posted a lot of videos on YouTube and Facebook, over 450 of them. More than the number of subscribers, he only had 429 subscribers, but 450 videos. Mostly using the handle Prophet of Truth 88. These videos all featured him rambling angrily about a range of political topics, most of them racial in nature. Okay, let's get into it. His YouTube account, now deleted, offered a kind of a chronology of his descent into far right extremism. All right. James constantly disparaged other black people, calling them cattle, sounds familiar, and domesticated animals whose intended role in white society was to be a slave. He regularly advocated setting up a separate homeland for non white Americans. And he talked a lot about death, warning that it's going to take a lot more death for us to get the picture and how effed up we really are. It doesn't stop there, there's more. James also will focus some of his rants on Mayor Eric Adams and the New York mental health system. I made up my mind, it says. Kind of told myself, you know, I may have to hurt somebody one day. Somebody may have to get hurt, James said, because there's no way that I'm going to do what society asked me to do, which is to try to be, to work hard, to play fair, keep my nose to the old grindstone, pull myself by the bootstraps, you know, go to work, pay my taxes, do everything you asked me to do, and then you're going to smack me in the face. James apparently, let's put his picture back up again. James apparently used a photo of a blue body bag. Let's put up that blue body bag. This was his avatar on Facebook. He said, and I quote, this is where I feel we are as a group of F people dead, we're effing dead. It represents something in my life too. It represents what I've been through, what I'm going through, and what I'm gonna go through in the future. And then another video compares black teenagers, black teenagers in particular, in packs to a pack of animals like wolves and dogs. Other videos aren't lead defend Russia and Vladimir Putin. Once again, sounds familiar. Suggesting that he has been consuming information from far right sources, particularly the conspiracy kind. James used several phrases and referenced several ideas that come straight from white supremacist groups and spaces, like the idea of being replaced as a race. So this is really interesting. This guy defends Vladimir Putin. Has some far right, far right ideology, but he's he's cloaked in this 
400 subscriber dimension where a lot of people don't see his content, obviously. Uh, but he's putting out this content on a regular basis. He has more videos than he has actual followers. Uh, the story is still developing, but you cannot dismiss the reality that much of his conversation and many of the points that he's making and the extreme dynamic connected to his ideology can be traced directly to either A, white supremacy ideology or B, agitators who manipulate on social media that originate from white supremacist think tanks. I know white supremacists and thinking shouldn't go together, but that's what they call themselves. All right, Adrian, what are your thoughts on this case? I think that this is just further proof that anybody can be indoctrinated when it comes mm. to white supremacy. And they can further and advance it no matter what the color of their skin is, even if they are um, uh, an oppressed subject, even if they suffer as a result of white supremacy, that they can still uplift it. And we see this as well as with sexism and a lot of the other isms. And so when it comes to this individual, you know, they actually went as far as engaging uh, in the alleged um, physical as well as dangerous violent behavior. At the same time, you have to wonder how many other individuals out there with this internalized white supremacy plan to do the same. The thing is, is that it's a problem for all of us, no matter what the color of your skin is. White supremacy is deadly for everyone involved. And so everyone should be committed to stopping it, even if they are not somebody who directly suffers as a result of white supremacy. That's right, very well said. Okay, there's a white student who threatened to lynch black classmates. Uh, let's go to the video. One, two, three, four. How many are in my store? Name them all. Let's lynch them with ropes and then kick the stool. I'll curb stomp every I see. Or just shoot them. Or lynch. I mean, who cares? Alabama. Cattle Ranch. According to our information, this actually started in March. It has now resurfaced on social media because posts circulating online. Um, have decided to make it even more public um, and it got my attention. Because post circulating online disclosed the name of the student and his social media handle, um, Michael Walter, a senior on the football team uh, and baseball team as well is allegedly the person behind this. Um, let's go to the second video. Just let me get through my senior year. You can do anything else to me after this, please dude. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I've been so happy recently just because of my girl. Please, dude. <sighs> no one likes me. I know. Please, young man. I'm going to talk to you directly because I'm sure somebody's going to share this video with you. Um, for those who don't know, that was this senior begging. Begging someone not to post what he said, not to post it online. That's the narrative. So let me talk directly to this young man. This is going to be a hard lesson, but it's a hard lesson early, which means you can outlive it. But you have to do the right thing right now in your life with what has happened to you. We are a combination of three E's, nobody escapes that. Experiences, exposures, and environments. You have a great opportunity to turn this around and become a social justice warrior. To become one who fights against racist. You have a story, you have a story. You also have a background. Do you know how many former KKK members are now college professors who lecture against racism? Many of them. They went to school, they got their PhD, and they are now university professors. I know some of them personally, and they happen to be good friends of mine. They are reformed. They did not transform as early as in their teenage years, you can. Now, I know what you learned likely came from your parents and your surroundings, shame on them. It is probably too late for your daddy and your mama, but there's still hope for you. Let me give you some background to this. The Cannes Police Department says they are investigating the matter and will send the findings to the investigation of the investigation to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office once they are finished. Remember, those are in fact terroristic threats, okay? Parents and students say racism at Plymouth Kenton schools is nothing new. It's a culture there. Parents are outraged in the district. The black parents say the punishment, which has not been disclosed, is not enough. 
The district admitted this was not the first incident of racial discrimination or intimidation this year. And they can't disclose the specifics of the action that was taken against the student or students. Students and parents gave the school board an earful at Tuesday night's meeting. Many asked how black students are supposed to feel safe in a school with that kind of racism. The Plymouth Canton Community School Superintendent Monica Merritt addressed the video during a Tuesday board meeting in a letter to parents and students on Monday night saying, we do not condone or tolerate reprehensible acts of this nature. All right, I'll put up a picture. It's a black woman, okay, Monica Merritt. Merritt said Tuesday night, and I quote, I am not able to give details. There is not an active threat, I will say, at our school at this moment. Also in the letter sent to parents, it encourages students to report any racist incidents and threatening behavior and counseling services are available to students. Uh, not enough, madam. Not enough, Dr. Merritt, not enough. Let me tell you why this is not enough. We have credible reports from your school district that this is not an isolated incident, that this is part of the culture. This is part of the systemic design of your institution now. It is a values marker, which means it has to be fault systemically. What's the plan here? What are you doing new? How are you training or retraining your staff? What speakers are you bringing in? How will you deal with racial discrimination? Will you now implement a zero tolerance policy? We need to know these things. These things are part of the solution. Simply saying we don't tolerate it, which obviously is a lie because you do. Those statements, they don't change anything. Now the reason why I'm talking directly to this superintendent is because we've reported on multiple stories right here at Indisputable where children, black children committed suicide because of racial bullying. And it wasn't just because of the students, it was also because of the teachers and administrators who protected that culture. Now it looks like to me, it's more than just this young white male who needs to learn a lesson. Adrian, thoughts? Yes, I think that this community has allowed and enabled this behavior, particularly at this school. And unfortunately, those students are a representation of their parents who make up that community. But that doesn't mean that the school cannot take the measures necessary to ensure that everyone is safe and also that people grow. And so that seemed to be expulsion, at least in my book. Um, but the first step for that young man would be accountability because anything less than that is just there's no reason that he would not continue with this behavior and that we'd not see it again. So they really need to draw the line and actually put actions behind their words. Yeah, agreed. All right, there's another situation. A Catholic high school student in Louisiana was arrested after he was caught on video attacking a black classmate by throwing cotton at him, then whipping him with a belt. The victim was sent home from school. Let's go to the first video. (laughs) Such a damn shame. That was a 15 year old Catholic high school freshman who approached a black classmate, threw a handful of cotton balls at him and whipped him several times with a belt. The victim stood up, defended himself, and he was sent home for the incident. The white student, a high school freshman, was arrested on March 15, 2022 and charged with simple battery and a hate crime. He was then booked into the Terrebonne Parish Juvenile Justice Center. The NAACP president, Jerome Boykin said, and I quote, this act was clearly something the student thought through to do. It was a planned act and it was racially motivated. It has no room in our society or in our schools. It's really unfortunate that in these days and times, African Americans still have to endure these racist incidents, especially in our school system. I was glad to hear that the school took swift actions against all who were involved. Unfortunately, 
Racism is alive and well in this parish and in this country. Another heinous crime from a high school comes from Loganville, Georgia this week. A 15 year old in Georgia was locked in a closet, doused with cleaning liquids while four classmates spewed homophobic slurs at him. The Loganville Police Department has confirmed that four teenagers have been charged after allegedly forcing a 15 year old male ninth grader into a bathroom closet for a prolonged period of time while being sprayed or doused with liquid cleaning products. Additionally, the students are accused of subjecting the victim to harassing comments of a homophobic nature. Now, most are actual minors, but in the state of Georgia, in the state of Georgia, 17 year olds are classified as adults. So there's one 17 year old involved, put up his damn picture, okay? That 17 year old, Kelsey Juliana Hayes is being charged as an adult. The others are being charged with everything from false imprisonment, reckless conduct, and a few others. Some are felonies, some are misdemeanors. Now, let me say this. You know, Republicans in Georgia and other states, are they passing laws to Try to create better policy to remedy these issues that are happening inside of our school systems. No, they want to tell you that the boogeyman is critical race theory, which nobody teaches and nobody really gives a damn about inside of K through 12 education. This is a political red meat move, but we have real problems inside of our school systems that are left unaddressed because these politicians rather feed you a lie than actually do their damn jobs. These are real problems, these are problems. They are systemic, they are dangerous, and they can lead to death. Obviously, it's traumatizing, but it can go even deeper than that. Now, once again, we elect individuals in policy positions to solve problems, not create them and ignore them. That's what you see happening in these stories, one after the other. All right, Adrian, thoughts? These young people, they are being taught terroristic behavior and they are acting it out on their peers. It is so incredibly terrifying the things that you just talked about that these young people have done to each other. And they're essentially just reinforcing these hate structures, these these ideologies and they're acting them out. And so for our leaders, members of Congress, also state elected officials to ignore it just to run after CRT really just shows you that they're plenty okay with feeding children to the system when those children end up engaging in this very same behavior that the parents in the community allow or enable through their actions. And so you just have to wonder where our society is really going when our children are just becoming little terrorists and we're grooming them and creating them that way. All while essentially just shrugging our shoulders and keep moving. Yeah, and you know, just like I know, a lot of this behavior is learned at home or supported at home, protected at home. And it is being exhibited inside of the school system. We have a challenge here, all right, we have a challenge. I encourage anyone, if you're in a position to be a mentor to a young person, please do that, take that opportunity. Know those moments are very sacred. All right, as always, Adrian, a pleasure to have you on Indisputable. Tell people how they can follow you and check out your great work. Uh, You can check out my series Overruled on Rebel HQ, which is on Facebook as well as YouTube. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Adrian Law. And I'm on Instagram at Adrian Lawrence. Um, And yeah, and I also think I'm on uh, on TikTok at Adrian J. Lawrence. Bam, you're on so many platforms. You just, you have to figure out which one's your own in the middle of telling us which one's your own. Exactly. That's good stuff. All right, always a pleasure. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, stick around, the bullpen is next. I'm going to read some comments. We got Shy Coltrane 42. Was just on her website, nothing but Daisy Duke's crap. That's accurate, actually. I went to the website also, you're right. Not Dweezil, aka Tailwagon Dragon. Is the love your neighbor part not in the Southern Bible? I am sock. Do Republicans drink different alcohol? Mine doesn't make me a racist, imploded Brainy. 
rich people not paying for anything is how they stay rich.